It's been a few weeks since we've gone over a Rimfire cartridge, with the last, and uh, well, I guess really the only one we've done so far, being the 41 Swiss. And given that, we will continue our trend of avoiding Rimfire cartridges and go over this cartridge instead. What's up, guys? Skip Yapikanis here, and on today's Cartridge of the Week episode, we will be featuring the 5070 Government, a very old example of a 5070 Government, mind you. Starting off, we will first take a look at the head stamp, to which there is absolutely none. That's just a little piece of paper right there that's not a not a anything. But yeah, there is no head stamp on this cartridge. However, that being said, we can deduce a lot of information about this cartridge just by general looks and all that, uh, starting off with the fact that this was very likely produced at the Frankfurt Arsenal. They tended to make all of the 5070 ammunition. And while it lacks any details as to which type of 5070 this is, I can infer based on the bullet profile that this is likely a full-scale, you know, rifle loading and not one of those lighter carbine loads. Meaning that we likely have the standard 450 grain bullet with this cartridge, which, uh, just for a fun little comparison, uh, the standard U.S. Army 5.56 bullet weight comes in at around like 62 grains, meaning that it would take about seven and a quarter of those things to equal one bullet from the 40 or the 50, 70, not 45, 70. And uh, you know the best part is the U.S. Army wouldn't even just stop at 450 grains for a you know service grade cartridge. The next cartridge that would you know replace this one would be in the ballpark of around 510 grains. Anyways, going back to this specific cartridge, and uh, we noticed two more things. One being that this cartridge uses a copper case, and two is this little crimp right here, which is on, uh, it's got two sides to it, which we can not only infer that this is a low indent example and not a high indent example, but we can also infer that this is actually a centerfire cartridge. But not just any centerfire cartridge, but rather a really weird one, as this one uses what is called the Binet priming system. Now, you were likely scratching your head earlier when I had mentioned that we were not going over a rimfire cartridge today, despite despite the fact that the back end looks like, you know, this, which is basically what, you know, all rimfire cartridges look like. However, unlike a modern centerfire cartridge like this other 5070 I have here, which has, you know, the standard exposed primer like we're all used to, the original 5070s used an internal primer, as did all uh, cartridges using the Binet priming system, and much like a rimfire, the case itself had to actually be struck by the firing pin, which makes for some real weird spent casing looks. Uh, now, another thing we can gather on this particular cartridge is that, as mentioned before, it's a low indent example using the shorter cups. And while, as you know, I think I mentioned before, I don't know the specific date on this example, that does indicate that it's a little bit newer of a cartridge than, you know, it could be because they started using the shorter cups a little bit later. Uh, initially, this would be a little bit higher and they'd be using a taller cup. Add to that, the primer cup itself is also of a newer copper manufacturer as opposed to iron, which I can tell by putting a magnet up to the case, which, uh, I did earlier before the video, but I have left it on my refrigerator, but just take my word for it. When I put a magnet on there, it didn't stick. Now, one thing that I have heard in regards to the Binet primed cartridges, or more specifically the 5070 Binet primed cartridges, is that due to this crimp right here, the casings had a tendency to split, and it was a routine complaint with this caliber of, you know, casings having a tendency to split in the chamber. And this was certainly a thing, however, it had to do with the copper casing itself, as opposed to the crimp left by the Binet primer. As full power 5070 service loads were well past copper's ability to be able to handle. Now, this salute, this uh, problem would would be solved when they would actually go to a brass case. Yes. Full power 5070 service loads were well past copper's ability to be able to handle. Now, this would of course be solved when they would actually go to a brass casing. Which, shout out to Rishala on iFunny for helping me narrow down that question as uh, he had the specific info from the cartridge collector's notebook. Uh, it was something I had heard about um, at the time I had purchased this cartridge, but unfortunately Google kind of like didn't feel like being helpful. So yeah, again, thanks to that dude for helping me narrow that down so I could include that in the video because if I, if I, I'll, I'll hear stuff like that occasionally, like these weird cartridges. Uh, I might not necessarily include them in the video if I can't prove it because I don't want to be, you know, having wrong info in the video. Anyways, with all that out of the way, you may still be wondering exactly what 5070 is. As though 4570 is a very well-known cartridge, 5070 is definitely a tad bit obscure. And in basic, the 5070 was the United States' first widespread adopted metallic cartridge, being chosen a year after the American Civil War. Now, initially, the United States would play around with a 58 rimfire load in order to avoid having to rebarrel guns. However, the cartridge they came up with severely lacked in performance, and by shrinking the diameter of the 
bullet as well as adding a little extra powder. The 5070, though not perfect, would prove to be a massive upgrade and sufficient enough for what the army wanted. The original iteration of this cartridge was the 5070 450, which translates to 50 caliber bullet, 70 grains of black powder, and 450 grain bullet weight. They would also make lighter carbine loads such as the 50 45 430, and while the main rifles to be chambered for the 5070 would be the Springfield trapdoors, plenty of other rifles like Remington's rolling block would get a 5070 chambering. The cartridge, and of course, the 1866 trapdoor would see its first major use at the wagon box fight, where 26 soldiers and 6 civilians, primarily armed with the 1866 trapdoor, were able to fend off a massive Indian force of a couple hundred with relative ease. The 5070 would continue to serve the army well until eventually it was replaced in 1873 by the better performing and now much more well known 4570. The 5070, however, would still continue to find common use by hunters and the likes for many years after its replacement by the army. And in fact, although the 4570 would become the official U.S. Army cartridge in 1873, the 5070 would continue to see use with the U.S. Navy up until about 1880. But, anyways, I think that is going to do it for this week's Cartridge of the Week episode featuring the 5070 government. I hope you all enjoyed the video as much as I personally enjoyed making it, and I will see y'all next time.